You beat me to it, man. Hi, hi. Yeah, well, hi. <laughs> so it's my boy Jax and uh, my number one son, the oldest, right? It's just me and him chilling today. And I uh, want to make this video for you. I actually made it live earlier and then Facebook cut it off like five minutes into it for whatever reason. So uh, it was a little bit longer than five minutes. So I want to make it this way. I was watching a video from my man Grant Cardone this morning. Uh, I first met Grant in person in 2011 when I was actually... Uh, selling cars so that this guy had insurance. I had to, you know, put the entrepreneurial thing on the back burner. That was when I started my podcast and my car and all that. Uh, but I was watching him this morning. He said at age 25, he made the decision to be the real Grant Cardone. He said one day he was living in a cheap house, a poor neighborhood, and he just decided that it was time for him to be who he was supposed to be. And something similar happened to me, and I would venture that a lot of successful people, this has happened to them as well. I remember 2014, I was on Garrett J. White's Warrior podcast, and I decided on that podcast, right there in that spot, uh, to become the real Ryan Stuman. And when I go uh, and do anything, I believe anything we're doing is we're doing all in and in excess, right? So I changed my Facebook URL to Real Ryan Stuman, and I became the real Ryan Stuman. You see, I had spent my entire life trying to be this guy that went to church, this guy that had a corporate job that wore like the suit and tie. Not that there's anything wrong with the corporate job or a suit and tie, it just wasn't me. I like suits and ties, but I want to wear them on my terms, not every day. But I was pretending to be this like, you know, this Christian person and all this other stuff. And it wasn't even that I was pretending. I was trying to be that person because I thought that's what society wanted. But deep inside, it was making me miserable because it wasn't what I wanted. It wasn't who I was called to be. You see, and then when I decided on Garrett J. White's Warrior Podcast to become the real Ryan Stuman, a lot of people left, right? You have to go through a purge in order to get, you have to give up in order to gain. It's Newton's law. What goes up must come down. You have to give up in order to gain. You have to let go in order to grab, right? <clears throat> and so I lost family. I lost fake friends because think about it. If, if I'm fake and I'm not being the real Ryan Stuman and I'm hanging around other people that are not being the real John Smith, then John Smith and Ryan Stuman have a silent pact together that we can both be fake and tell each other lies as long as we don't ever call each other out on it. And I was tired of living that way. And all those fake people scattered from my life. And for a while, I didn't have money. And for a while, I had no friends, no family. I had to really, like only a few friends, I should say, and no family. And I had to really like regroup myself. I had to basically rebrand my whole of who I was because I had branded myself as this one person my whole life. And then I'm really another. And if I emerged like coming through fire baptism, right, as this other person, it was scary to a lot of people. They're like, oh, Stuman's starting to tell the truth. If he tells the truth, then they're going to know the truth about me and I can't be fake anymore. Get them away from me. Right? And they started telling stories about me and everything else. And I'm totally okay with that. Because once I decided to be the real me, I struggled for a couple months. But I can tell you the last few months I've made more money than I've ever made before in my life. On a monthly basis. I've oftentimes made more money in the last few months in a month than I've made in a year. Right? Living the truth, right? Uh, what makes me a good salesperson is living the truth. When people get on the phone with me, I don't bullshit them. I set expectations. I'm honest with them. I tell them how it is. And if they don't like it, then we're not a fit. It is what it is. Right? I don't try to be fake and be a people pleaser for them because it's not serving them either. Because if I'm not telling them the whole story and not telling them the truth, then they won't get the results that they expect. And that's not fair for anybody. And that same thing goes not just for business, but in any aspect of your entire life, any aspect of your entire life, that same thing. Uh, falls in line. So, for example, if, if you meet your significant other, what happens oftentimes in divorce, right? Because two people get married and they were faking each other so that they would marry to each other. And after four or five years, they get to know the real person. And guess what? They can't stand each other because they originally got married thinking they were somebody else because they were pretending to be that somebody else so that person would marry them. Right? It's the number one cause of divorce. Irreconcilable differences should really just be, oh, I found out who the fuck is. I am a kid here. <laughs> so think about this. You think, well, how do I know who I'm supposed to be? Well, I can tell you how I knew who I was supposed to be. You see, there's a voice in the back of your head. And I say this a lot. And you may get tired of hearing it, but I'm going to say it again. Anyway. There's a voice in the back of your head. And whether you want to call it God, Allah, whatever, Jesuits, whatever you want to call that voice. We were put here as human vessels. And that voice is our GPS. It's to tell us what we're supposed to do in life. That song in the back of your head. You're supposed to be singing it in front of everybody. That poem you wrote, it's supposed to go viral on Facebook. The people you are supposed to help, that voice telling you pay for this lady's Starbucks or pay for this person's groceries or help this person out or donate to this charity or get involved in that. That's the GPS. And every time that you ignore it, you're sending a signal out that you don't need a GPS that you can find your own way. Think about a stubborn old man and his wife driving down the street and his wife telling them to pull over and get a map or ask the guy at the convenience store for directions and him saying, ah, we'll figure it out. 
We'll figure it out. I don't need no stinking map. I don't need some contraption that smart people made so that dumb people like me won't get lost. It's the same thing. That voice is your map. That voice is the person at the convenience store telling you go two blocks down, make a left over at the stop sign, go past the come and go, and then there's your destination. That voice is telling you. Let me give you an example of what that voice says to me. When that voice says to me, it says, Ryan, you owe it to everybody to be the real Ryan. You owe it every day to show up the way that you're supposed to. Ryan, you owe it to society to be a vessel of truth amongst a bunch of BS, Ryan. You need to help that person, Ryan. It's your job to help that person because when you help them, their finances will improve. Their finances will have a ripple effect on the people that they are around, the people in their circles, the people that they hire, the people they train, the customers they do business with, their family and everything else, right? It is my job to deliver the truth to the marketplace. And it's what makes me an effective salesperson is because I tell the truth, right? And that voice in the back of my head said, Ryan, you're going to have to teach people not to be fake. You're going to have to tell people how it is. And that voice in the back of my head has said, Ryan, I'm going to put you in prison. I'm going to put you through hell. I'm going to put you through adoption. I'm going to put you through bankruptcy, homelessness, drug addiction, because I know you're strong. And I know that there will be a story that comes out of your mouth that will affect people and will show people that they don't have to give up and will show people that they don't have to quit. But I know you're strong enough to take it and don't you quit on me. And that's what it says to me. And I followed that. It was hard to tell people that I have been to prison. It was hard to tell people that I have been in trouble and that, that Ryan Stewart's not the name that I was born with. It was embarrassing, but guess what? It needed to be done. I was put here on this planet to go through that suffering so I can bring that truth to people like you watching this right now that need to hear it. And that is my message today. So you have a choice, right? Two choices, actually. I say a choice held up number two. Two choice. Choice number one, or option number one, you can put this video down and go back about being yourself, whether you're fake, real, whatever, going about your business. It's totally cool. I won't judge you. Or step two, we're right around the corner from New Year's. And you don't have to wait till New Year's, but you can choose that at midnight when the bottles pop and the confetti comes from the ceiling and you're kissing the person that you're with, you can make a decision that you're going to be real, that you're going to emerge in 2016 as the real Ryan Stuman, that you're going to emerge in 2016 as a person that's no longer going to make up their destination according to what others want their destination to be. You're going to be the master of your own destiny. You're going to lead and take charge of your own life. You're going to stop trying to make everybody happy and start focusing on yourself because I can tell you this. They say it's narcissistic or whatever, but if you'll focus on yourself first, everything else will fall into place. Because if I didn't focus on taking care of me first, how can I take care of him? If I didn't focus on taking care of me first, how can I provide for Amy and, and Jax's mom, honestly, and Asher, my son? How can I provide for those people if I didn't take care of me? If I'm sick, if I'm not making money, if I'm not performing in the marketplace and I'm not taking care of me, then I can't let that ripple effect go down to the people that rely on me, my clients, my customers, the people like you watching this video, my family and everything else. So you owe it to yourself, to emerge the real you and be selfish for once in what you want because that voice in the back of your head is guiding you. It's like the law of attraction. It's just not a law of attraction. It's when you get in line with that voice in the back of your head and you do what it wants, then all of a sudden you're serving your purpose and things start going your way. Trust me, I start thinking of things like, you know, hey, I think we should do some car guy funnels. The next thing you know, I got 600 of them at $7,000 a piece showing up at my doorstep. 600 of them. It's not because law of attraction or I'm like going to church every Sunday. It's because I'm living what that voice in the back of my head says. And as soon as you start living it, you'll make more money. You'll be happier. Your family will appreciate you more. And you're going to go through a purge and lose some things. But what you gain will be tenfold. I hope you enjoyed this video. Share it if you dig it. Make sure you go over to hardcorecloser.com and subscribe. And also, I got this new software, C-O-Y-X-O.com, clickso.com. Sign up get a free profile. You'll love it. Later.